Okay. Let's move on to the next technique, which is startups. John and Julie Gottman are the ones that originally coined this concept of startups. And this basically has to do with how we approach our partner. We've got email, we've got texting, we've got phone calls. We're in the kitchen in the middle of our activities, or we're maybe just sitting on the couch talking. As we go about our days, we've got different things going on. We're involved in our lives. We've got work. We've got our things that we're doing, that our hobbies, our interests, the kids, the animals. There's just all sorts of things that we're doing. And when we interact with each other, it matters how we actually approach each other. And that's called a startup. A harsh startup is when we approach in a way that's very critical and blaming. And it's immediately going to put our partner on the defensive, it's going to trigger a state of fight or flight and defensiveness. It's not going to be productive at all. We're really not doing ourselves any favors when we approach our partner and with a harsh startup, because if we're hoping to have a positive outcome from that approach, we're essentially guaranteeing that we won't, that we won't get what we're hoping for, unless what we're hoping for is to make our partner angry and to shut them down. If that's what we're hoping for, that's what we're going to get. Something to keep in mind is that the way you approach your partner is directly related to the outcome you're going to get. So if you truly have an objective of resolution, of being heard, then how you approach your partner is directly related to what the outcome is going to be. A soft startup is kinder and respectful and engages your partner. This word kind is difficult for some neurodivergent folks because they don't necessarily know what is kind, what is going to be perceived as kind, what looks kind. Sometimes neurotypical partners don't, don't perceive that, that tone, that body language as kind, this can be difficult. We need to clarify with our partners what their meaning is and get to an understanding that if our partner approaches us in a way that doesn't look or feel kind to us, if we've learned about them and we know that this doesn't mean unkind, if a certain approach doesn't mean unkind, we need to learn our partners and learn that it, it doesn't that they're not being unkind to us. That said, neurodivergent folks, it's also important for you to do the best you can. I know I said earlier that you may not be able to learn tone of voice, but this doesn't just give you a free pass to say, I can just be blunt. I can say whatever I want and just say it's my neurodiversity. That's not how it works either. It's important for you to do what you can to speak the language that your partner speaks, to be as fluent as you can be. You may never be able to hear tone, but you may be able to recognize that certain words and the way you approach in certain ways is blunt and harsh. And you can learn by asking your partner, did that seem blunt to you? Was that harsh? And why? Be a detective, work together as a team so that you can understand what kind of approaches feel like harsh approaches to your partner. Harsh startups tend to result in, in your partner putting those boxing gloves on. Most of you are in that antagonistic state in your relationships. A lot of you are. And you've got the boxing gloves on in your relationship a lot. You don't want that. It triggers this fight, flight, or freeze. Freeze is like flooding. When someone's flooded, the brain and the body just shuts down. This is a physiological reaction. There are hormones that are released into the bloodstream by the brain and the body and the organs in the body that are meant to keep us alive. It's a survival mechanism. Our blood pressure increases, our heart rate increases. There's decreased emotional regulation. We're not able to regulate our emotions very well in that moment. All the blood flow goes to our, our major muscle groups so we can fight off an enemy, fight off an attack or run away. Our body is perceiving our partner as that enemy in that moment. It's a reflex. It's boom. It happens instantly 
when there's a harsh startup, our body does this as a reflex in order to keep us alive. Because if our bodies and brains were designed to take a minute to determine, am I in danger or not? Do I need to be able to run? Do I need to be able to fight off an attacker? We wouldn't have survived as a human species. It's instant. The thing is, once these hormones are in your body, it takes 20, 30 minutes for them to metabolize. And they're there. And when they're there, we're revved up. We're angry. Just this week, my son asked me if he could do something. He wanted to go to his girlfriend's house. And I said no. I had a reason for saying no. And I knew he was going to be mad. I knew he was going to be upset. I knew he was going to go into fight or flight. And I knew it would take him 20 or 30 minutes because he was angry at my answer. I knew it was going to take him 20 to 30 minutes before he could even be rational enough to have a conversation with me about it. So I told him no. I saw him escalating. I saw him getting angry and he wanted to argue with me. He started to say some ugly things to me. And I just said, we're not going to talk about this now. We can talk about this in an hour. I have to go back to work. I knew there was no way he could physiologically have a rational discussion with me right then because his body was surging with fight hormones. Once this happens in the human body, there's also less blood flow to the frontal lobes in the brain, which is where our logic and our reason and our ability to be rational happens. Nothing productive is going to come out of it for a good 20 to 30 minutes. And if you continue to try to have that conversation, it's not going to go well. At that point, you are fighting. You are in a boxing ring. You are fighting each other. The person who's in fight or flight, and chances are, whichever one of you brought the conversation up will get triggered as well. When someone is in fight or flight and they're either running away or they're fighting back, they're going to trigger you too because you're going to feel attacked or abandoned if they run away, then you're going to go into fight or flight. And then you got both of you in fight or flight. And it's just a hot mess, as we say here in Georgia. Harsh startups don't help anybody. They're just not going to help you ever. Every time I do this workshop, I always have people go, oh my goodness, I recognize these statements. Because these are some of the things that are in our, our repertoire of how we approach our partner. Why didn't you take out the garbage? I wish you'd just cut the grass. It's been a week. You never fixed dinner before six o'clock. You were wrong. You have no idea what you're talking about. These are all harsh startups. All of these types of statements are going to put your partner into fight or flight. So if you recognize these, and I'm guessing you do, I'm guilty of them sometimes too. Sometimes I hear it coming out of my mouth. And as it's coming out of my mouth, I'm like, stop. And it's already out. And then I'm like, there it was. Sometimes I'm able to go, stop, hold on. If you hear it come out, you can stop it. And you can say, wait, you know what? Let me back up. You can repair it right in that moment. If you keep going with the attack, then you're just not going to get anywhere. Instead. You want to learn how to use soft startups. Soft startups sometimes mean preparing before you have this conversation. Sometimes we just say things that just come out of our mouths when we're upset, we're frustrated, and that's usually going to be non-productive. That's a reflexive startup. Sometimes we need to prepare in advance and think about what we want to say. I walk people through this when I've worked with people in coaching. Write it down first. Be conscientious of the timing because when somebody is distracted, working in a hurry, stressed, pressured, sick, exhausted, that's not good timing. 